So hi, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much for um, joining us today. You have a lot of things you could do on this Thursday, and um, we're really happy that you're here with us. And um, I'm honored that these guys invited me to come here and um, have this conversation with them. Um, full disclosure, we've never even met in person. Um, I, I came to see the show, and I, I hit up Elmer. I told him how much I really liked it. And then um, through Manuel Lopez, he connected us and uh, suggested that I do this conversation with them. And, um, really honored um, to be a part of this. Before I get started, I want to say thank you to um, Felix, who is our awesome um, tech guy today. Felix uh, Quintana up in San Jose is the one that actually set up this whole Zoom thing. And um, we're recording it, so I'll be posting it to my YouTube page later so you can watch it there as well. Um, or so you can share with friends if you would like. Thank you, Felix, for doing this. And uh, thank you to Residency, um, the gallery, for um, continuing to shine light on, on, on people like these guys. And, and um, if you haven't been out to Residency out in Inglewood, um, give yourself that little treat. Beautiful place. It's a nice little uh, gallery. And um, <clears throat> they're open right now. It's better if you make an appointment, of course, because of COVID restrictions, et cetera. But um, thank you very much to Residency and to Rick out there. Um, one more thing before we get started, I know that, man, these are difficult times. We're all living in difficult times and we just want to be thankful for our health right now and um, grateful for um, being able to, you know, um, still participate in things like this, even though it's online and this is the 2020 and 2021 type of art experiences that we're having. And so um, it's actually kind of cool sometimes to be able to stay home and do this, you know, and um, share with people. And I appreciate that. And I appreciate everybody and everything. So I'm going to get started real quick. Um, this show uh, out at um, Residency with Elmer, I think, I'm sorry, <laughs> Elmer Guevara and Josh Vasquez. Um, just caught me by surprise when I went. It, it, it was a um, very, very, it felt, it felt really personal. It felt like a diary when I was out there walking through it. Like, um, I'm going to start with Elmer's show first. And, and I felt like I was walking through a, a drawing diary. And there's something that I read in the, the statement for this show. That, um, one of the sentences that says, uh, the show is called Mi Orgullo. In, in Mi Orgullo, Guevara's body of work honors and accounts his parents' homeland, experiences of civil war in 1980s El Salvador, and the struggle they endured migrating and adapting to Los Angeles culture. And walking through that uh, show, I, I felt a lot of that. Um, there's something that you do, Elmer, in, in, your, um, in your work that really digs into um, like the personal experience. I think I jumped the gun a little bit by um, not talking a little bit about you. So let us let let me let you introduce yourself a little bit and tell us um, where you went to art school and stuff. And then um, I'm gonna have a question for you about this. So just introduce yourself a little bit. Yo, what's up everyone? Um, thanks for joining. Uh, I'm Elmer Guevara. Um, I'm from Los Angeles. Um, from the South Central neighborhood. Uh, I went to school at ELAC and East LA College, and then I transferred and did, did my BFA work at Cal State Long Beach. And um, I'm currently at Hunter College in New York City, but uh, working remotely from, from LA. Uh, I, I started off painting graffiti as a teenager here in the city. And I and then I got in, I got influenced by a couple older friends who were painting and also doing graffiti at the same time, and that kind of pushed me to go to school and and go through the whole academia stuff. And yeah, I picked up painting pretty early on. I started painting with acrylics like in high school, and kind of just been painting ever since. I'm gonna start the. I'm gonna share my screen here and start like the walkthrough type thing that you recorded for us. Okay. And can everybody see that? I think that's pretty clear. So this is a walkthrough of the show here. And um, 
right there, this, this image here, I couldn't stop staring at it. And something about um, how you painted your family here. Can you tell me a little bit about this painting and just dig deeper into it for us, if you will, and, and tell us a little bit about the details that you put inside of the arm here. Yeah, so I, I work with this idea or concept of like the body being a vessel. Uh, I, it kind of started with like uh, quick small paintings of bottles, like physical bottles that contain volume. And I got the idea of like a similarity with the human body that holds all sorts of memory, holds all sorts of uh, traumas and emotions. And uh, so, so that's what like the, the, the visuals within the body are doing. It's kind of like flowing within the human body. Um, but I do it in a few ways where I have transfers that are very um, the super iconic images. And then I kind of blend in with pain and glazes and other approaches, but pretty much like if you zoom in, you see uh, images of rural living, uh, images of the war they endured in El Salvador during the Civil War. And it has references of pigeons that relate to the city and them coming to the city. But uh, basically like that's a portrait, that's a picture of my younger brother, like when he was being baptized. Watch your brother. Yeah, but, but basically, essentially, that's what it's doing. Like the movement of the hands is like everything that's from them going into him now. So oh, yeah. that's, what, that's why the painting is called Passed On to Him, because now it's like he's inheriting this too, as well as I did. So beautiful. And I also uh, want to point out one of the running things in your images is this cop car in the back. That's uh, it's like, I think, reference to your graffiti days, right? Yeah, th and that, living, I'm sure too. Yeah, that that for sure, and then just the environment where I'm from. It was uh when I was a kid, it was a it was a pretty active area, South Central, and so you know, cops were always they were always around. So it's always a thing that it was definitely more of a fear of them than than security from them, you know. But but yeah, it's a it's a constant motif that I use in different works. A beautiful piece beautiful piece i'm gonna keep this little thing going here yeah um i know there was one that you wanted to um highlight and talk about and i don't want, i don't mean to go through them really fast but it's all good this one um i could talk about that one that one's not in the show but i could talk about it um if, if you want me to have it no, I remember that you, you sent me one that was one that you wanted to talk about. I guess I Yeah, it was a, I don't think it's in this little collection. Okay, so I messed up. <laughs> Sorry. Nah, it's, it's all good though, but. Uh, um, is it right here in the show, one of these? Yeah, it's uh, towards the beginning. It's a little kid sitting down. So there, that one, yeah. 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 So tell me a little bit about this painting here. Um, so it's also doing the same thing with uh, the transfer stuff. I'm trying to make it seem fluid and it's swimming in the body. Um, that's, that's me at like nine years old to sell portrait. And it's just, it's supposed to seem like very childlike. And I try to like use the palette to kind of speak on like it being a, an adolescent event, but um, I used to hopscotch like in a literal sense to go from one place to the end of the place, but also to like, it's like a goal to start from one and end at 10, like you're trying to get to this other higher uh, state. So, but for this one in particular, it's, uh, it's talking about the peer pressures of like growing up as a kid in South Central and, and then having to choose to join like gangs at an early age that a lot of like cousins of mine and friends that I grew up in the neighborhood kind of had to make these decisions right away. So that's what the little toy soldiers in the bottom, the red and the blue are kind of like depicting. It's supposed to reference like Bloods and Crips, but just that in general, just gangs like this group and this group. And so that's what that's that's what that's about. That's what the imagery in the body is also speaking about, like gang violence and gang uh, joining gangs. So like, it's just like either choosing. That's why it says this way, this way on the left. Like it's choosing the, this route or taking a hopscotch and kind of still be, being being a child. Um, 
And yeah, it just kind of relates back to like those decisions that we are peer pressured into as a kid. And this piece is called Be Cool or Be Lame for that reason, because <laughs> you, you, were either, you were either seen as lame if you didn't rock with a certain crew or whatever, but just thinking about it later when you're grown, it's just like, damn, that's a lot of pressure for someone who just doesn't know where to go at, the, at that age, you know, especially when you're about to break into your teenage years. I was also struck by um, every one of your family members. You, you create this like heaviness, or I don't know if you create the heaviness or if the heaviness is there and you just capture it like in every of their images. And, and um, I don't know if this is something you always do um, or but you like choose these um, moments where there's like just a lot of maybe melancholy or, or deepness and thought. Yeah, I, I do try to layer them up. Like I consciously layer them up to like, I don't, I don't necessarily want to make them busy, but I do want to force the viewer to discover why they look. Um, heavy, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't understand exactly what you mean by like heavy. You mean like- Like, like weighted by thought or weighted by like circumstances of life. Okay. I mean, I, I think it kind of happens because they're to me they're very honest, I, and they're they're I'm kind of just trying to reflect these honest honest narratives. Yeah. So I'm not sure if that's where it like comes from, where it feels that way, but they're very honest to me in that sense. But I'm I'm wondering like, I'm I, like I tend to choose things that are also like, you know, melancholy and sad and things like that. I mean, mm -hmm. we can choose to like you know, shoot pictures of smiley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pictures of like, so I'm just wondering if, if like, um, if this is some kind of like conscious thought that you have where it's like, okay, I'm gonna have, um, you know, people just in deep thought. Okay. Because um, even the, the kid that you, that you painted, which was you, right? Yeah. The last one that we showed? Yeah. Even that is kind of like a, a sad, uh, you know, the kid has a sad moment. Oh, it wasn't, it was another thing. Um, but even that one is a little bit sad. So yeah, yeah just uh, like wanting to dig a little bit right there, see uh, um, if if you have anything to say about that or or why you choose, or is it is it just that like the place that you live in in your head? I, I I think so because I was trying to express like traumatic sort of experiences mm -hmm. of my upbringing. Um, not necessarily everything I paint has to do with like traumatic events but for the most part this body of work kind of is talking a little more about like yeah those those experiences that shape out identity or or generate trauma for the most part when i was here i also stared at this one for a long time um and this of course is a self-portrait right yeah and I think it's interesting how you also use the the hopscotch here and then in the hallway it's like you know that drawing again of the guy getting arrested and things like that um do you have something you might want to say about like the transition between that one and this one in your life or in your work um this one this one for sure is more it's more uh, more recent i guess if if you want to put the visual data in a setting or a time span this was actually, I made this painting right around the election time. So this was during COVID, like it's set during COVID. And, uh, and, and a, a, lot of, a lot of like the, the hopscotch works in that way where I'm coming, I'm coming out of this, like this, I feel like now I'm like, I've grown, I've, I've matured. So like I left a lot of stuff in the past that's kind of like in this dark room and the hopscotch is having me like come out. Like that's why I, I, I mentioned like, so going from one to 10, it's like, it's proceeding to like my goal. Like this is my next move. Like this is where I'm moving to. And, uh, and this, the objects kind of just talk about the time and like where my head's at at this moment and where I'm feeling. And the stuff in the room is kind of like what I'm leaving in the past or I'm kind of growing out of. Mm. Take a move. Yeah, that's a really beautiful piece. Let me come back over here a little bit. Yes. And this one here, is that you and a birthday? 
Yeah, so it's me and a cousin. And uh, again, it, it, it's still working with the same idea of the, the human being being a vessel and, and a lot of the images within the, the body. But I mean, this one, I don't know if you feel like this one's kind of sad, but this one's just kind of like celebrating a birthday, you know? I was, uh, I was five years old there, so. <laughs> <laughs> but do you see also like just a little bit of like melancholy or sadness in it too, or is it just me? Um, nah, I mean, I, I don't want to say I don't see it. Now that you brought it up, I, I do. But uh, I don't, like, that's why I said I don't intend for them all to feel that way. Well, it's but, interesting that, you know, you don't mean to do it. I mean, I didn't mean to do it either when they started shooting. Like, everything that I shoot kind of has, like, a sadness to it. But it's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. just something that happens, you know? For sure. And this is another self-portrait, right? Yeah, it's a, it's a self-portrait. Um, this one's, I guess, the stuff that's on the shirt, the text is kind of what's more about Ooh. the concept behind it um yeah it's like it says it defines what a pocho or a pocha is i don't know if you're familiar with the word yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but basically like when i was going back and forth from new york and la i had to take a lot of like covid tests to like come back and forth and i remember being in harlem and i was trying to take a covid test and um, you have to fill out like this thing on a tablet and you have to look for your race group or your, your ethnicity group. And like, it just kind of tripped me out. Like there was all these like different categories and I cannot find one that was me. So then I started to think of all this other shit that I was being called like a pocho or a mestizo. Or, and that's kind of like what's defined inside the shirt there. What do you like to identify as? I'm just Salvadoran or American Salvadoran. <laughs> or sometimes I just say I'm from LA, like, you know, but... But yeah, it just it just made me think so much about like the way we're classified or you know, the way we classify ourselves or what groups we fall into. I'm gonna just uh do a couple more because I want to get to Josh real quick. But um um yeah. in, in the in this one and in uh one that's not in the show, um okay. this one and this one. I love these two right here. Okay. Um I mean, I, I'm Mexican, grew up in East LA, and, and uh, I mean, we have a lot of the same experiences, whether, you know, doesn't matter where you're from, but growing up in LA, you know, you pretty much have a lot of these same experiences. And I see a lot of my youth in this too, as well. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but I just wanted to ask you a little bit more about your layering in this. And, mm -hmm. um, and how long ago did you paint this one? Because it, it I guess you could take them one at a time, but just tell me a little bit more about these two. Yeah, um, so they're both from 2020. Um, the one the one with the arcade is like pretty early on and the other one's like kind of towards the end of the year. Uh, but uh, the arcade one is called Naive to the Game. And it's, uh, it's, it's two kids playing a, a video game and the, the arcade game, the setting of the arcade game is the actual setting that's outside. Like it's mimicking the outside, like that you see liquor stores in LA everywhere. So it's playing like on this double window where it's like they're playing this game, but it's like also real life. Like it's the same game that's outside. And uh, it just, uh, it just kind of reminded me uh, a lot of like, kind of just being brought up with like this with machismo and like you having to be ready to fight at all times like growing up and where you couldn't allow people to disrespect you and stuff like that and you know you just couldn't let people step over you and I remember growing up around that sort of mentality at least for a while and uh so this is kind of what this game is teaching them it's like yo you have to be ready to, like for fight you know regardless of whatever um like that yeah but it's relating to like this machismo culture that you're brought up as a kid um yeah that's what that one's talking about and but i i, I love the play on like the double window where it's like you're playing the game that's actual life yeah yeah and then um the one here at the bus stop like it's a portrait of me but in three different life stages so mm -hmm. Yeah, I put, I put years on top of the head sometimes, so you kind of know, like, if you do background on me, you know that I was born in, a certain, in 1990, so I was a certain age in the baby, the bottom one, and then the, the one with the Laker shirt, I'm a little older, but it kind of just, it kind of just talks about, like, 
living in the same vicinity. Like we never moved and my parents also never drove. So we were always taking like the same bus routes to go to places. And, mm-hmm. but it, it, it talks about the, just being yeah, stationed in the neighborhood. The eight bus lane, never know what bus lane that was, right? Yeah, this, this is the 105 that runs through Vernon. 105, yeah. That's yeah, right. it runs through Vernon Avenue. So it's in South Central. And uh, that was just like our main, that was like our primary, like, like yeah. bus route to every other place. But, but yeah, it just talks about like, you know, being in the same vicinity for gener- for a couple. This is a question from a non-painter who always tries to understand like color palettes. Yeah. How do you, this is, I mean, completely like general question, but how do you like come to your color palette? I don't know. Um, That's a question. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I like to work a lot with just complementary um, contrast. So like, I like purple and yellow. Um, you see the kid wearing a green shirt next to red shorts. Uh, I keep that in mind a lot. Um, but it's mainly either working cool or warm and it's just to diffuse things or to make some of the stuff more important. Like the whole setting on this blue one is pretty dull, like a blue day, but the umbrella is super red. So you focus on the umbrella right away. And then it kind of links you that it's raining and, uh, but it's still like less intense than the sidewalk. So it just, I just work that, like I try to work things out that way to, to, to make focus and, uh, it's just a fun way to like create contrast for me too. It's just to use like a fundamental uh, complementary color palette. I'm gonna let um, the whole thing play right before we get to Josh's part. Okay. And um, just while I, while this plays, can you just like tell me a little bit about the difference from being at Elac to Long Beach to Hunter College? Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> being like South Central and having these different experiences yeah. is, is going to shape your adulthood in, in a lot of different ways that you don't know yet. And I'm yeah, wondering yeah. how you feel about it right now. Yeah. Um, I mean, in, in ELAC, it was like very foundation work, but I did, I did get a lot of influence from a lot of people there. Like I met Manuel there. Um, Sergio Teran was one of my teachers there. And uh, honestly, like he, he, he kind of like, taught me like the start of like oil paint and uh, glazing several techniques that I still use today. Uh, at Long Beach, it was super technical, man. I, I took a figurative route there. So I learned to paint, paint the figure there. And so that's where my foundation to use humans and figures comes from. And then I think when I got to New York, I just tried to start playing with different tools and different imagery that I was seeing there. And also too, because I was away from home, I started to make a lot more work about home, about my family, because mm-hmm. I was away from them. And um, yeah, if I could put it in a nutshell, it kind of my transition was kind of like that. It started pretty fundamental. Then I learned to paint figure, representational stuff. And then now it's just like me trying to fuse this together and kind of start adding different tools and, and layers. And I, 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 I love your work, bro. So thank you, man. Um, thank you for that. And we'll come back again. And after we talk to Josh, we're going to open it up to questions from um, callers out there in the Los Angeles landscape. Um, Josh, what's up? Yeah, what's up? I like that you call yourself Josh Bear on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Cause like I first see your when I first saw your picture, like oh, it's hard ass homie, and there's like Joshy Bear. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I've been having that name since like middle school, basically. That's where that came from. That's awesome. It did make me laugh though. Um, so let's uh let let me start by letting you um just introduce yourself a little bit. Tell us a little bit about where you what your school and you're at right now. Cool. Uh, my name is Josh Vasquez. I'm 28 years old. Uh, I grew up in the Pico Union area of Los Angeles, which is just south of southwest of downtown Los Angeles, is where I grew up. And uh, I went to Cal State Long Beach. I studied drawing and painting there. Uh, I graduated the same class as Elmer in 2017. And now this is what I'm doing, making some artwork, living life. Boom. So now when I went through yours, 
I was a. Uh, I was feeling how it was personal, but it was more of your personal surroundings. It was more like um, you're you're allowing us to see like your uh, landscape through your images. And so it, it also feels very personal, um, but it's it's more about like outside, you know? So um, I thought that was an interesting uh, contrast between your work and, and Elmer's work in this exhibit. And um, let's let you start um, by, I have these three images here, All right? And didn't you send me one more? Yeah. <laughs> Let's let you start by um, telling us a little bit about this image here. Okay, uh, this piece is kind of like a, like a jumping point for my work, I think. I think uh, looking at the other work, uh, I'm, I'm thinking about uh, window bars and um, uh, the view from them and what, what you see when you look out the window type of thing. And uh, I think that's what my work is, is primarily focused on is like views from a window or looking inside, outside looking in, that type of thing. And I really wanted to take the window bar kind of concept and really push it as much as I could. And eventually I came to using uh, text and language to be able to abstract the idea of the window bars and what that means. So I think in this one in particular, uh, with the subtitles, it says Rejas de, Vent de Ventana which is window bars in Spanish. It kind of gives access to, to people who don't really uh, speak English uh, more insight into what the, the window bars is actually saying. And with the other work, uh, I've kind of pushed that further, you know, with bringing in Russian and German. So that's kind of where this work comes from. Yeah, and you're, you, you use the window bars a lot. Um, and when you grew up, did you have like a ton of I'm sure you did have the security yeah. bar in your house. Yeah, I did. Actually, those window bars are actually from my home. In, in the apartments I grew up in, there was one room that had a, a window that had an emergency exit. And that's where we used yeah. to sit out from. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you had the same thing. But yeah, we had the window bars we could sneak out from too. Um, and I, I went through your work on your website and you have a, a like a variety of different styles. and, and uh, I, I don't know if it's um, something that you're working with or changing or, or, or is this just like the place that you're at right now, but um, you have a lot of abstract, abstract work as well. And um, that's some, some pretty like, it's a wide spectrum of, of work that you have. I'm just wondering how, how you um, approach, like, what am I going to paint next? What am I going right. to paint? Like, you know, am I, I gonna... think, I think it's a, it's a lot of things. Um... Yeah, I've, I've done performance, I've done a little bit of video, you know, photography here and there, but uh, I learned, I learned, so I went to Castle Long Beach, it's a super traditional school, you know, oil painting, uh, figure painting, and a lot of like, like, not so much theory, but like thinking about abstract, abstract expressionism and things like that in, in terms of our history. Um, so I think, especially when I, when I was in school, I really wanted to, to play, you know, uh, school is a time for you to go and learn and kind of explore what you think, you know, what, just explore really. So I think that's where that comes from. So I think um, doing a lot of paintings, just like not saying, performance. Not saying I'm just going to do this, like I'm going to exactly. do whatever the hell I feel like doing it. And yeah, that's been exactly. Cool. And I think, uh, I think my work, because um, I took a lot of sculpture while I was at school. Mm. And I think my, my work reflects that with, with being very sculptural. And, and kind of meshing sculpture and painting together. Yeah, this is interesting here because like on this one you painted the bars or actually you, it's negative space, right? Use tape right. or something. Yeah. yeah, it's negative space. That's the raw walnut. And over here you actually put some bars on this. And this was a house right. that was one built, once built like a little tiny house I saw. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Was that installed? Part of a, it's part of a different project, but it's basically the, uh, the fruit of that project. Let, let me um run through your stuff a little bit right here. Let's go back. And if you've been to residency, this is the, the back room. Um, 
I always have a second artist back here. You use a lot of spray can stuff, huh? Spray can work. Oh, this is airbrush. Oh, that's airbrush? Yeah. Yeah. There it is. Can you tell me a little bit about your little stencils that you put in? Like I, I've noticed a lot of them have like this one has a little palm tree in the back. And um, some of it is just like a lot of stencil work, right? Or like cutouts? Uh, is that yeah, something it's, a combination. Like it's a combination of like uh, masking work and and I painted the, that tree in that one. Yeah. That The tree is hand painted in this one right here. Okay. And together you and Elmer created a collaborative, I don't know what you call it, like team or? A duo, I don't know. Group. <laughs> It's my crew uh, called Cipotes, <clears throat> dos, dos Cipotes, and uh, Cipotes um, is a term that means kid. And it, is it slang or is it like an? I'm pretty sure it's slang. A, it's slang, yeah. yeah. Slang term um, Salvadoreños use um, to reference little kids. And uh, I told you guys when I first talked to you that uh, I used to work with a guy from El Salvador. He used to call me Cipoton because I was big. <laughs> <laughs> So dos hipotes, um, let me let uh, open it up to both of you guys and like tell me a little bit about that as I run through this again um, in the background. But tell us about dos hipotes and, and what, we can, what we can expect from you guys um, working together. Um, you want me to answer this one? Yeah, go for it, I'll follow up. So, yeah, so we both went to school together and I think uh, that this is one of like being Salvadorian, uh, is one of the things that really linked us up together is as soon as we found out that was just a like kind of starting point for our friendship and a lot of conversations and and we grew like we found a lot of similarities in our experiences not, not just like in our early life but in our like academic life and going to school and like you know uh interacting with other people and you, you don't you don't really see a lot of salvadorian americans like uh it's mostly uh Mexican Americans that you're like talking to. So when we met with each other, we, we totally hit it off. We're like talking with each other. And then, so we went through school together. And then after uh, me and Elmer got our first studio together, he just kind of hit me up like, oh, this opportunity came up. And I was kind of like on the fence. I'm like, I don't know if I could do it. And he really pushed me to do it. And from there, uh, we, um, we had a studio and then uh, this exhibition came up where uh we're kind of like we had an opportunity to exhibit work and i thought of this idea of los hipotes where we would collaborate on our shared experiences from uh being salvadoran american and we created a, a sculpture um at angels gate cultural center that was curated by gloria sanchez and fa4 collective and there from there we create the sculpture was it's a it's a installation is video and from there, we, we did a lot of paperwork. And this was when uh, Elmer first started at Hunter. So the, the works that we made were actually mailed. So I would mail him work, he would paint on it, he'd mail it back. And then we had another show at uh, Baldwin Park. And we submitted those works there. Similar to what we did here, where is he had his pieces, I had my pieces, and then we had a collaborative work. Yeah. And uh, now we're, we got a new studio together again. So I think. Uh, it opens more room for more collaboration. Nice. Yeah. I don't know if you have anything to add. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say, like, I think also to uh, the fact that we're both Salvadorian, but we were like kind of like um, not so many people at Long Beach that I remember were from like LA inner city. And that was just like another thing that kind of linked us up a little there too. Uh, but yeah, you know, it, it was just kind of like a, it was cool meeting this student and we it was kind of clicked right away. It was super oh. cool. Yeah. How long have you guys known each other? Um, six, five, six years. Yeah. 2015, I would say. Might be sooner than that, but around that time. Are, are you guys working on something together right now that's probably going to be a future show, mostly bought this show? Uh, not a show, but we just started a couple, couple works. Yeah. Kind of like, you know, messing around. Nice, nice. 
So I was going to say one more thing. The show is extended until the 20th. And if you have time to get out there, please do go out there and check these guys out. I was going to ask one more thing, but I just left me right when you were going to do that. But let me stop this share. And um, let's open it up to some questions. So um, Felix, go ahead and unmute everybody. And um, let's, uh, let's see, anybody have a question, just start talking. Hi, I do. Hi, hi, Natalie. <laughs> <laughs> Great to see you. Thank you for <laughs> facilitating this conversation. Thank you. So, um, yeah, feel free to say, um, ask your question. Hello? Do we lose her? Boys, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. All <laughs> right. So I, okay, I originally asked when these these uh this body of work was created and if i'm correct is it during like this last year like during the time of covid um for for my for my body yeah it's all from 2020 oh well, i'm sorry if you asked that in the chat i wasn't even looking at the chat yeah just shame on you rafa but that's okay no i i asked that too because what really you know, strikes me as a viewer, and granted, I haven't seen it in person, but Elmer, for your work in particular, your paintings themselves serve as portals. And yeah. it's interesting because I've heard of this within the context of COVID, how the pandemic itself is a portal as well, which I know for me, even personally, has really allowed me to dive into more of the, you know, contemplation and introspection, which I could see a lot of that in your work. Um, not to mention like you were drawing upon a lot of the body and memory yeah. and you know a lot of also this you know how the body carries you know memory in and of itself as well as intergenerational traumas yeah. and so I can see how that you know coupled with Josh's work you know um, is a really great you know applause to residency for curating both of you too in the space because you know, for Josh, I'm seeing a lot too in terms of how, you know, the architecture, you know, almost as body as well. And, you know, thinking of, you know, along the lines of portal and windows, right? Uh, quite literally in, in the paintings or the, you know, three dimensional aspects of your work, um, how that transports like what would be the in-gallery viewer into your own vantage point you know, framed by the bars and thinking about barriers, right? And, and of course being, you know, for the most part in our domestic spaces for like such a, you know, lengthy period of time. And it, it can't, we can't help but think about not only our mortality, but just even like safety overall, right? Uh, whether that, you know, be really thinking about, you know, the, you know, the uprisings that were happening, you know, um, and, the, you know, all the questions around that, um, especially in Los Angeles, right, the history of that. So, so I just want to thank all, both of you for, for sharing. And I look forward to seeing what's next. So congrats. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I feel the same way. My question is for, uh, oh, this, is, this is me, uh, Manuel. Um, I have a question for Elmer and Josh as well. Um, um, like I think Elmer and I think Josh touched upon it, and it's the idea of uh, uh, being Salvadoreño or being a Cipote in LA. And I know that LA has a long uh, history or, or, or tradition of Chicano painting. Um, did at any point you guys feel like you were pushing or trying to create an alternative view of mm -hmm. a uh, person of color or from Latin America that was uh, not Mexican, um, or how did you approach it? Were, were you looking at, I mean, I know we walked through through LA and there's all these murals and you know, it's all a mix, but but I know that, that Chicano painting um, has a long history in LA. So I was just wondering if you guys like the way you approach that or are you pushing away from it or are you think you're kind of going into it as well? Uh, that's a good question, man. Um, I. I can't say that I'm trying to go, I, I don't want to say I'm fully trying to go away from it because I, I fed off of it so much, you know, because I know it so much. Um, I, I just feel like uh, 
it's just been like overshadowed a little. That's all. But um, I mean, the thing is too that a lot of the experiences are very similar, for sure. If like you're from LA, even though it's an immigrant thing, um, I, I don't know if like I'm not sure if I'm trying to build like a canon for just Salvadorian art, but I I I do feel like. We, I do kind of have some pride in like, yes, I'm Salvadorian. This is Salvadorian narrative, but I don't, I don't want to say that I don't, I want to push away from fully from Chicano painting. Cause I, I've learned so much from it. You know, it's just been around me so much too. So I, I don't know if that answers you, your question. Yeah. I think that's a, that's a really good question. I think I agree with Elmer. I think a lot of the, the, the work has been overshadowed by, by you know, Mexican-American culture, but I think it really as well with what uh, Los Angeles culture is. And I think that's, that's somewhere where we can meet a little bit. And I think to kind of answer your question a little bit, I think the work is inherently like Salvadorian American. It's not like, I mean, I, I think uh, my work kind of like talks about it a little bit, but in, in terms of our collaborative work, I think it talks about it very directly especially with the, the the piece that we did at angels gate culture center which you, which you can see at the uh, on our website that felix shared in the chat uh that video just talks about what that whole experience for us was you know growing up in the 90s and our parents immigrating here and trying to like make sense of the world um but yeah i think our, our, our collaborative work directly ties into into that all right, thank you guys. And then, uh, what well, was a two part question? Is it a yeah. two part question? Tacos or pupusas? <laughs> Damn, man. <laughs> Why not both? I'm like 50 50, man. That's hard, hard question for anybody, bro. That's hard, man. That's hard. I don't know, man. Depends. Depends. It depends on the day, I guess. I don't know, but I can't say one or the other. Depends. Eat the baby's heart. They're both good, man. Super good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure there's a couple other questions out there. Anybody else? Don't be shy. I have a question. Mr. Mueller. So, so both of your works are highly um, process driven. Um, how, what do you think, do you, when you started working together, did you find that there's a lot of friction bringing your processes together? or that it meshed really well? And what have you learned from each other's processes that you are now bringing into your individual work? Um, I, uh, I feel like it, it kind of, it was a contrast in some way, because like, again, I rely a lot on like the figure and I feel like Josh's work is like less, less figurative. So I, I really enjoy putting this, this mesh together of like a more abstract approach with a more representational approach and kind of like, I think that fusion was kind of nice, you know? Um, I, we've, we've done a, quite a bit of work, but like, I feel like I, I, I kind of gravitate a lot from like his, loose, his looseness of painting and, and it just feels more fluid and fun. So if I, if I think I grab anything from it, it's definitely like this loose remark or, um, just a more looser approach. I think I can, I can be tighter. I, I myself can be a lot tighter at like trying to render and stuff like that. So I, I feel like that's one thing I got from collaborating with Josh is just his looseness. Yeah, I think there's, there isn't a lot of friction. I mean, I think we work really well together. I think it's a lot of fun. Like what's nice about it is that there's a lot of communication between us. They're like, oh, I don't really like this. And he's like, yeah, that's fine. Let's, let's try to like, compromise here and there so I really enjoy that about our, our process and I think uh, you know I, th I just have a lot of fun working with them um, I, I like you know uh, like you said I, I don't rely on the figure as much and I really like rely on color and, and, and color theory and, and just having fun and then I think for him to create that kind of ground and then for me to go back on top of it and kind of make revisions is a lot of fun. Anybody else? Good, qu else? good question, John, too. Thanks, man. Yeah, thanks, John. Thank you, John. We have time for um, at least two more questions. Anybody else out there, please um, 
Don't be shy. I have a question. It's me again, Natalie. Hi, Natalie. I am curious. Um, in terms of thinking back of your earlier like artistic days um, or when you decided on like pursuing your art practice, what, what do you wish you knew then that you know now? I think for me, I think I wish I knew sooner. I think growing up, I didn't think yeah. like an art career was possible. I had, I found out like two years before I graduated. I wish I knew from the get go. I, I think I, um, I didn't waste a lot of time because I learned a lot, you know, but I kind of waste a lot of time. <laughs> I, 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 I literally did not know that you can have an art career and like show in galleries and have, yeah. like, be a professor and like mentor other people, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I totally agree, man. I, uh, it, it, like it, it felt right for sure. I just didn't know how I could sustain myself with this. And so, it took me a while to like say like okay cool I'm gonna do it <laughs> but it like took a lot of like I don't know like chasing a passion was kind of a hard commitment at first but but you just, know I'm, I'm glad I did it just to put it in perspective a little bit for you guys uh, uh I started taking photos when I turned 40 and I was like I wish I knew this when I was 20 so you yeah. like the fact that you knew it early is, is a blessing, you know, so. Natalie. <clears throat> you could, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Natalie. Um, let's do two more questions. I want to try to go to, there you go. Oh, yeah, a question here. Yeah, I have a question. Um, definitely, my name is Emmanuel. Uh, thank oh. you, uh, Almer and uh, Josh, for putting this uh, very beautiful show. I definitely got a chance to see you in person. And uh, I was, you know, now that we're talking about painting, I was a uh, question to Almer, like, has painting in New York has influenced your work in terms of how you approach certain things, like the, the, the sort of like the, how you depict the, the body or, you know, the artists over there? Because I know like New York painting is so different than LA. So I'm curious of how like, this, has it been a shift or you like, nah, I don't want to, I'm staying away from how, New York painters painting and kind of focusing on my own. Yeah, I, uh, I like I, I kind of mentioned there earlier, but like being away from LA kind of made me want to paint more about LA. So if it's things that I picked up from New York, I think it's probably like the the different approaches of Mark because I used to uh, I used to paint very much like almost like, I don't want to say photorealistic, but pay, from a reference, you know? And I feel like when I got over there, one of the influences that I got from seeing work around was kind of the looser mark or using different materials to make a mark and uh, where it doesn't have to be so like polished and rendered. Um, but it like, it, it's kind of crazy because the environment actually never really came into my work until like the end like this big piece that I have back there, that's kind of like the only one that has a setting in New York. Um, so it's not that I'm against like the canon there or anything. It's just like, I also too, I lived my entire life here. So I've been like, I'm like so rooted in like the visual here. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like the one thing that I do notice that changes a lot when I go over there is just the, my palette becomes a lot more gray for some reason. And opposed to when I come here, it becomes a lot more colorful. Like, uh, it's, that's kind of like the only thing that I really imagine, or it's like that I see for sure within the work. But no, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think New York was like in there yet. <laughs> I don't know. Man. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Let's, uh, I want to dig for a couple more questions. So um, let's find somebody else that can uh, give us another question. Oh, There's a question no, in the no chat best. that says, what, are, what artists are you two inspired by at the moment? Okay, that's clear. And Hilda Aceves raised her hand so she could be next. Um, what artists are you two inspired by at the moment? Question from Gloria Sanchez. You want me to go here? Yeah, yeah, my bad. <laughs> okay. um, I, I, I look a lot at uh, Injadeka Crosby, uh, Nigerian black artist. 
um i kind of like i use her technique in a way that the transfer stuff and uh kind of like a little disciple of that technique and i uh ever since i've seen her work i just like the mesh of like this transfer sort of feeling and then uh and then she and then her her representational work that's super polished i'm just trying to use it but use it a little different and i'm trying to kind of break that away from like her approach more now for sure yeah i think i'm inspired by a lot of like uh two good artists that come to mind are uh, dave hammonds and mark bradford i think uh um their use of material and and in their work and to still be able to call it painting is so inspiring to me because the way that they create their marks uh, mark bradford like sanding away at his pieces and using uh, posters like from from the street is is, is um, influential to me. And then it happens with like his tarp pieces and his crates and uh, that type of work is. And then the fact that he does like sculpture as well and and video, uh, I, I I was very happy to see his work at Hauser and Worth. So uh, he's he's an inspirational artist to me. That's a really good question. Um, thank yeah. you, for that, Gloria. Um, Hilda Seves, are you still there? You had a question? Yeah, I'm still here. Um, well, that was a little bit of part of my question, but I guess uh, to start off with a comment, I'm also from South Central. My bus is a 51, 52. Um, and so it was so comforting. I think I was so drawn to both of your works because it was so comforting to see these images that I don't realize that have become so part of our subconscious landscape. And I think it's so great to kind of, I don't know, it was just comforting and familiar. And I know Rafa, when you were saying like, there's a lot of melancholy and I thought, well, yeah, being from the hood sucks, it's not fun. So I think whether it's intended or not, it, it's there. But I got it got me thinking, I wonder what other artists from South Central are out there that maybe we're not aware of, if you know of any to continue supporting. Um, from South Central. Shout out to or it just inner LA. No, it's very unique layered identities. So it's hard to shout to out find to Felix Quintana. Follow him. Yeah, Felix. Felix for sure is one. Uh, hmm. I I I can't think of like. I mean, a lot of my friends, other painters around, are kind of like uh, people who come to mind. But I can't uh, I can't think of any that are just like that from the inner city part. Uh, but there's a lot, trust me, it's a city, so there's a lot. Um, yeah, I, I wish I had like a, a, a list or something, but I can't, uh, I can't think of any names right off the top right now. No, you gave, I mean, you gave a lot of great names. Some people put some words in the chat you might want to look into. So. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Hilda. So let's take one more question, and this should really round off our whole hour. And um, Yo, can you guys see me or hear me? There we go. Jerry. Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, what's up, guys? <laughs> I've been what's trying up? to ask a question, but I don't like I'm so bad with technology. I was like, I might as well just type it out. Um, so I just want to congratulate you guys on a on an awesome show, man, <laughs> to begin with. And Thank um, you, yeah, it's it's I love your work. It's it's uh, just a whole journey through LA really with palette and you know the sculptural textures and all that. Um I got a question, you know being in LA being from the LA it gets overwhelming with the amount of information that as artists you know we're constantly picking up on our day-to-day -day, um whether it's visual auditory you know whatever you know your focus is at the time how do you guys one you know set up balls to kind of filter what what you need um and not get overwhelmed and you know too it's just it's also a, a process of uh, selection is is there's you're documenting history as you're selecting this this you know part of a wall or part of a texture or this photograph how do you guys you know decide that um you know that's it's just a lot of information to to pick from i think it's really hard to like get all of it so you really can't i think it's yeah. a it's about the attempt of getting it. Uh, but for me, I think, you know, 
you, you get all of the images, all the inspiration, and then you kind of pick a, pick what you think is the most important. And I think from, from my work in particular, in choosing the textures for my sculptural work and thinking about uh, my personal space and, and thinking about space in general with the messy space and you know the urban landscape, that kind of thing, uh, it, it all comes from a really personal space. And uh, I kind of like really just dig, dig inside of, of what I'm really, what the message of the work wants to be and, and I, I pull from there. I think yeah. that it just really comes from a personal space is the short of it. Yeah, I, I agree. Like, I think it's just kind of like what, what you have connection with in, in that moment. Cause I, that's why I use like cop cars because like there's just been so much cop cars or I use pigeons. Um, there is like so much you can use, but you you always kind of just like how Josh said, you kind of just narrow down to like what's going to work for this particular message at this time. Um, so, I mean, but what's, what's so amazing is that it's such a rich pool to like pull from that. I mean, it's almost endless of combinations you can do with so much shit you see here. Um, but, um, but yeah, I, I think it just kind of comes, you know, you kind of then just build your language that way. So you use pigeons because they mean this, or you use the cop car because it reminds you of this, but, and then, so then it kind of becomes recurring. You kind of built that little alphabet of like motifs or things that you, Used in each painting yeah i mean for for my work in particular you look at this work like that's the blue of my house and those are my actual window bars and i but the image isn't really like personal but it's like this it's more of an idealized space but I, it comes from a personal space yeah yeah it's always cool to hear that because you know each each uh decision is is very specific you know it's it's with specific intentions and to have it's always cool to hear the the artist's mind through that selection process. So, um, thanks for for answering. Yeah, answering. Yeah, thanks for the question. Good question, yeah. man. Thank you, Thank you, Elmer. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, Felix. Thank you, Rick, and Residency Art. And uh, thank all of you for tuning in and, and checking us out. Um, like I said, it's going to be on YouTube. Um, we'll post it later. The link in our in our link trees, etc. Um, if you know anybody that would like to have heard this conversation or just want to watch it again. Anything else from you two guys before we sign off? Um, just want to say thanks again. Thanks to you, Rafa. Thanks to Felix. Thanks to Josh. And thanks to Rick Garson for opening the space and allowing this project to happen. Um, yeah, likewise. Thank you. Thank you for everything. Thank you for your time. Thank you for coming through. I mean, there's a bunch of shit you could have done today. All y'all came through. So thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you very much, and good night. Go back and wash those dishes. All right. Bravo, John. <laughs> Bravo, Elmer. Hago, thank you, man. Man, beautiful, beautiful. Great storytellers.